Eagles lose, I'm still gonna have a good week. Everybody loses, I'm still having a good week. Cause we still in it by one game. God damn it. Jason fucking Garrett, seriously? Is that what y'all went through for 10 years? Is that what y'all went through for 10 years? Yeah. Exactly. We actually have good team. What? Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great, great taco, excuse me, Thirsty Thursday. I keep forgetting my days because they keep going by so quick. I uh, hope everybody's having a great Thirsty Thursday. We are here at the beginning of week number 16 in the NFL season. My goodness, uh, we've got the Rams versus the Saints tonight. We'll be live streaming the game, of course, keeping up with what's going on. We're keeping a real eye and hoping that the Rams, you know, here's the thing that's kind of funny. The Rams are vying for a playoff spot. You'll remember the Cowboys destroyed the Rams early in the season. So if they make the playoffs, do we get credit for beating the Rams? I'm, I'm asking for a friend because, you know, they are always, always throwing shade on our Dallas Cowboys and basically saying we can't win. We're not really a good team. We don't beat good teams and things. But if they're 500 right now and they are possibly could be our saviors as well because they still have to play the 49ers. You know, it's amazing how things look differently in a couple of weeks in the NFL. Uh, three weeks ago, everybody thought the Eagles are just going to be sailing with the number one seed all the way to the Super Bowl. And now we look at it and say, are they imploding? So the NFL, it's kind of crazy like that. And three weeks, three games is a lot of games that are still left. Um, I want to point out something here, okay? Um, Eagle fans and people are saying, you do so much Eagles content, you're an Eagles creator. I am not an Eagles creator, but you have to understand this. Uh, just like we have to see what the Giants do, of course, this week, because the Giants are playing the Eagles. The Eagles are the top dog. They won the division last year. They were in the Super Bowl. They are in the way of our Dallas Cowboys. If we're going to get the number two seed, we have to finish better than the Eagles. And the best thing to know about your enemy or people that you're chasing and pursuing is everything. And we want to know everything that's going on. We want to find the weaknesses of things. But here's the thing that's kind of funny to me now. Because when we listen to the talking heads that say things about the Cowboys, like, well, you know, the Cowboys, they can't beat playoff teams or good teams, right? Now you've got the Eagles basically putting their season on beating bad teams. You, nobody else sees a contradiction here? They say, oh, well, the Cowboys suck. You know, you're, you're, you're not beating good teams and things. You're not playing anybody's. The Eagles' season to be saved will be beating up on lesser teams. Here's another one. You know, I, I actually, part of the, and the other reason why I also do a lot of Eagles content is because I have taken more shit from Eagle fans, from Philly 500, being thrown in our face that you guys were in the Super Bowl last year and how superior you are, how great Howie Roseman is at a GM and the Cowboys, they stink, how much better Jalen Hurts is than our quarterback, Dak Prescott, the turnover machine. To see them get a slice of humble pie for all these people who trolled me to literally have somebody steal their lunch money, I am enjoying. Now, here's where you sit and listen to. There's subtleties in the game that you can look at and see what's really going on. You have to read between the lines. Like I had a clip of um, Jalen Hurts scrambling. Jalen Hurts runs up the middle. And to a man, you see every one of his receivers and his tight end just stand there. Just stand there 
literally as he's running down the field instead of trying to make a block. I know when my quarterback got hit, my offensive guard, Zach Martin, is up there standing up for that guy. He's trying to do what he can to protect him. I didn't see anybody protecting Jalen Hurts. And this is the one that really is funny to me because Nick Sirianni, who is, you know, Mr. Uh, I don't hear shit from the 49er fans. You know, he's in your face when you're winning. And then he's, mm, I, I'll, I'll let you call it what you want to call it. But his call for the last play was basically looking for the referees to save them. They have literally been saved by the officials game after game. He literally makes his play calling to use the officials. Listen. Why take a shot downfield in that situation where uh, a shorter completion could have gotten you into field goal range? Yeah, there's at times there, Tim, you, you know, we've seen, um, you know, you can get a pass interference there. Um, you get a, and, you know, it was what it was on that particular play, but you can, if you get a pass interference call there, and, and if a team's giving you a one on one shot uh, for, you know, very similar to what happened on the other, on the other side of the ball, they ended up getting a one on one shot that, um, you know, had, had some different things there. And we've seen it. We had one on one shot against the Rams. Um, and you can get a pass interference, and now you're in position to, to kick it. So um, we, have, we have some of the best receivers in the NFL outside. And so there's times where you're going to be able to, you're going to do that. And we felt like in that situation, we had an opportunity to, uh, hey, it didn't work out that particular time. Um, and, but we've done it at other times in two minute drills and, and, it, and it's worked. So but in that particular time, it didn't work. So we understand the criticism, um, but um, hmm. not only could you get a pass interference, also AJ has a tremendous ability to come down with the football um, in one-on-one -on -one situations. And you know what, in this particular case, it didn't work out. Um, but, you know, we're, we're comfortable with, with, with what was called and what we did in that scenario, and, you know, we'll, we'll be better next time because of it. Four times. Four times he said pass interference, pass interference. He is literally calling his plays because the officials have saved them. Wow. And now that they're not saving them, they're getting different results. So here we are. We need the New York stinking Giants, my buddy Rashid back here. We need him to smile down on us. That shouldn't be a game, the Philadelphia Eagles versus the New York Giants, but I'm betting that it is. It could be our Christmas present. Now, in the meantime, we're going to be taking on a Miami Dolphin team on the road where we've had our road woes. We are on Zach Martin watch because that's the major injury we're watching right now if he's going to be able to play with the thigh bruise. Um, but we're not the only ones that are injured. Miami's whole offensive line did not practice yesterday. Did not practice yesterday. That doesn't mean that they're not going to play on Sunday. But they are definitely resting them, trying to get them healthy and getting them ready for the Dallas Cowboys. And... Um, we will be watching to see what the practice report looks like. Uh, Namak and Sue, uh, it's looking like he may be signing with the Miami Dolphins again and may be playing against us on Sunday. So that's the basic stuff. It's actually been kind of quiet in Dallas. I'm hoping that the team is circling the wagons, dissecting what went wrong as far as the running stopping against us, and that Dan Quinn devises a plan. The thing is, is you can't cover every base. A team's identity is a team's identity. We're one of the best pass rushing teams in the league. But we've got to find a way to be able to stop the run, and we have to continue to score points to make teams more one-dimensional that will play into our strengths. And as we get out of here, before I go get some more work done here at the Red Brick House, and we'll be live streaming tonight the game, um, let me listen to Rich Eisen's power rankings and see how much we have fallen. This is my power rankings. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Power rankings. All right, here we go. It's week 16. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. And it's time. It's time to start really spitting facts. Like the last 15 weeks, I was dancing around. Dancing, dancing around, around the facts. Dancing around facts. <laughs> dancing around, no, with facts. That was a good now I'm just. I'm just going to start. I'm just going to really lay it on the line. Dancing around facts. Not that I wasn't before. I'm just telling you, it's time. 
There's a new team on my power rankings oh, list. Oh. And it's quarterbacked by Jake Browning. I don't remember oh, The Bengals wow. are tense. Oh, wow. The Bengals are tense. Mm. I'm concerned about Jamar Chase's health. But two, the way this two weeks maybe, right? The way this kid is playing right now. Oh. And T. Higgins, how about that play that T. Higgins made? That's Taking that 50 50 ball and saying, it's not a 50 50 ball, it's a 100% ball, and I'm reaching for the pylon at the same time. Unbelievable. I think he was mad. I said he wasn't him last week. <laughs> he was, he <laughs> definitely <laughs> consumes this program. He also <laughs> wants to be paid. Let me just say something. The defense, the mm-hmm. defense coordinated by Staten Island zone, Lou Anarumo. It's similar to the last year's team. It's similar to the teams that we've seen make the playoffs. And as long as Jake Browning is doing the Jake Browning stuff and, you know, remembering times where the Minnesota Vikings used to make him feel bad and he's going to take it out on the Vikings. Now here comes the Pittsburgh Steelers, the only team to have beaten him. Mm -hmm. I'm right about that, I think. (laughs) The Bengals are 10th on my power rankings list, new to the list. Number nine, no change, zero change at all. The Browns are there. Joe Flacco, the flacco Sants, love that. flacco Sants, My baby. coach of the year candidate, <laughs> Kevin Stefanski. They're going to go to Houston yeah, they are. this week. Oh. That's a big 8-6 and six team hosting a 9-5 and five game. Joe Flacco and Case Keenum. Let's go. Buckle up. Two guys, two guys <laughs> who are uh, all too familiar with their couches. <laughs> this is it, man. Although Case has been around all year. But bottom line is the Browns are ninth. No change. The Lions are eight. I'm keeping the Lions at eight. Now it's time for a bunch of changes. You might think the Lions should be a little bit higher, but mm-hmm. that one game against the Broncos made me feel like it's still in there. I need to see more consistency to start moving them up because those that are inconsistent or have been moved down. I think this is the lowest they've been ranked on my power rankings all year. Down three spots are the Philadelphia Eagles at seven. Ooh. I'm putting them at seven right here. I think that's fair. And I am seeing a three-game losing streak, ill-timed to say the least, and I am seeing a Uh-oh. defense that is not taking the ball away enough. And, you know, with, with those guys up front, I mean, Jalen Carter, let's see more game-altering plays from him. Let's mm-hmm. see some sacks. Let's see some takeaways. That's been missing just as much as consistency on offense. Mm. So there's seven down four spots. I'm putting the Cowboys here, and I, I I I couldn't have been more disappointed by that. I I put them at two, and I'm like, this is the year it's going to be different. And then they go out and put on 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 tape and in front of the whole world to see on live TV. Just the same old, same old. All right, let's have a team that is uh, coming out hitting you in the mouth in a very difficult environment to focus and execute. And it just steamrolls downhill, and they just get blown out and see you later. So, Bills can, had to win that game. Dude, I know what they had to do. The Cowboys had to also. If they want to be the one seed in this this conference, they had to win that. Every game is have to now. I don't want to hear that. Who needs conference. it more conversation? So, they got the Cowboys. Uh, I've got the Cowboys four, uh, down four spots. The one. Miami Dolphins are up two spots at five. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think the Dolphins are going to win this game this weekend, personally. And I think that they are, what a move, man. Tyreek, sit. We need you for the final three. We Mm -hmm. got this taken care of without you with the Jets coming to town. I know they just put up 30 on the Texans, but you sit. We've got it. And they just totally crushed it and removed the taste of that loss to the Titans directly out of their mouths. Up two spots because I still think this team has a shot at the two seed. I still think that this team winds up with uh, 12 wins when it's all said and done. I like the Kansas City Chiefs still. That's still a, a championship defense. I think they win out. I think they're 12 and 5. I think they win this division. I think they still have a shot at the two seed. And I think that they still might just wind up when it's all said and done hosting the AFC championship game Woo. anyway. That's still in the ether. And Karma is still a friggin' boy on the Chiefs. All right? So everybody back off. And I love that she's working blue. She's acting like every fan is. She's just the most famous woman in the world. And I'm just concerned at some point, Brittany Mahomes is one more uh, Kadarius scissor hands game away from pulling a full on Giselle saying, my husband cannot (laughs) throw and catch it. So let's catch it and remove that pressure from Brittany, please. She should. On behalf of all the Mahomeses. (laughs) Number three on this list, up two spots. 
I put the Buffalo Bills third on my power Oh, rankings. my gosh. I am putting, oh, my, I, 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 I am putting an eight and six team number three. I love the it. Game they had to win. I love it. What's that? Because <laughs> I Be love what they are doing. They are playing some of the best football in the NFL right now. And I will keep first. saying it. Number four. It's not 17 and it's not number one four. Because that's what it's all been about. Allen, can he can he put on the Superman cape? Can he do it himself? And then where is Stephon Diggs in all this? Where is Gabe Davis in all this? You know who takes the pressure off of that? James Cook. He Cook did it against the, the Cowboys. He's done it against the Eagles, and it didn't wind up with a win. He is amazing, and I'll say it again. He's playing like Christian McCaffrey for the Bills. And if he is that type of talent week in week out look out look out you better keep them out of the tournament he did not practice today with an illness let's get uh let's get some fluids in him everybody mm. but and, and then again i mean the bills are taking on easton stick and uh the chargers and and gif right it's not coach jiff it's coach gif i think it's coach <laughs> okay GIF. coach yeah, gif could be good, uh, yeah. so let's uh let's uh let's just everybody understand how good this team is they're three. Number two on my power rankings list, up one spot is the current one seed in the uh, AFC. By the way, Ravens. Lamar Jackson hmm. is playing better this year than he did in his MVP year of 2019. That's a fact. I'm concerned about Keaton Mitchell going down, yep. but this defense is championship quality. Lamar is MVP quality. John Harbaugh is pl- coaching out of his out of his skull right now. And um, Kyle Hamilton, I spoke it into existence. He's on Friday's show. Hey. We're excited about nice. that. Son number seven. Uh, that's right. He has no idea. Man, you have no. so many kids now. He man. has no idea that someone from Notre Dame could be the son of a Jew. He's coming from uh, Antonio Cromartie and Phil Rivers. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know about that. I mean, you could see you, the touchdown, right? That, I mean, that's technically. Uh, all right, number one. <laughs> touchdown. I should stay out of that lane. <laughs> wow. And touchdown. get back into the power rankings. <laughs> <laughs> the 49ers are was, the best team in the NFL. Who's I don't even who? think you needed to say that they were number one. I think we knew, right? That's I it. Mean, so here are my. I don't, I, I'm not even it. backing it up. I'm even telling you. All right, so at least we stay in the top. But here's the thing that's kind of crazy as we look at this because as you go through from week to week, teams are rising and falling. Buffalo has only got a two-game win streak, and they've got them you know, in the top five. Kansas City, which has been so up and down, you can't look at that Kansas City Chiefs team and say they're great. The Ravens, they've been playing really consistently. San Francisco has as well. But the way it has been and the way things have turned over, I guarantee you, three weeks from now, it's going to look totally different. All right, good people. We'll keep you up with all of the news that is going on and happening in the NFL. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, I appreciate you guys. Any no, they suck. Versatile. I've been telling you all season, Philly. They've shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me? <laughs> Caleb Carter, it's like they shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> they have shit on you. Don't don't you hear me? Jordan <laughs> Caleb Carter, it's like they shit on you. Kill them. Oh my goodness. Did he say they they cock it on them? Eight to style.